Okay, fans of the really unusual Omega Moonwatch, you know who you are, and we've got one this morning that is just going to be absolutely stunning for you. You're going to love it, and you're going to want to see all the pictures of it on our website, and you're going to want to hit rewind and watch this video again. So Omega is known for celebrating lots of different uh, milestones and having lots of different commemorative watches. And it's a lot of fun to collect the various Speedmaster moon watches, especially the ones that commemorate specific missions or anniversaries of different flights. Of course, you know the great history of the moon watch and how it became flight qualified by NASA. If you don't, you should look it up. But this is a really interesting watch because in 1992, Omega decided to commemorate not a flight or an anniversary of some sort of mission, but instead to commemorate a movement. So this watch in 1992, they made 999 examples of it. It is numbered. If you look at the listing on our website, you'll see that uh, engraved on the case back, there's a number slash 999 because that's all they ever made of this one. And it was to celebrate a movement it's the 27 CHROC12. So in keeping with Omega's somewhat frustrating system of changing their numbering systems and using confusing numbering systems, I'll dissect this one for you. This movement, typically the Omega chronograph movements that were launched in the 40s and 50s were larger movements. They were uh, bigger than 28, 29, 30 millimeters. So this one was a smaller watch uh, uh, movement that would fit in smaller watches. It's a 27 millimeter movement. So that's where the 27 comes from. It's a chronograph. So that's where the CHRO comes for. That's a chronograph. And then it has a C12. Now what's interesting about that is that the, uh, the counter for the hours um, will go to 12 hours, which you see at the six o'clock position. So this was an unusual thing at the time to have a, a, a counter that would go to 12 hours, especially in the smaller movements. So what's great about this movement? Well, after a few more refinements, it was launched as a joint venture between Lamania and Omega. And a few more iterations, a few more uh, refinements over the years, and it became known as the 321. So of course, you know that the 321 is the most sought after movement in Omega moon watches that uh, it was used from uh, 1957 to 1968 in the uh, Speedmaster Professional. And so this is kind of a precursor uh, of, of that movement, but fitted into a commemorative watch from 1992 that they only made 999 examples of. So that'll be something interesting for you to relay at the party uh, over drinks and peanuts while you're discussing watches and you'll probably lose your audience five seconds in. But the, the watch itself, it is a column wheel chronograph. It feels buttery smooth when you wind the watch and when you start and stop the chronograph. It's just a really cool watch to have in your hand. And of course, the 18 karat gold everything, it's got a really nice weight to it. But aside from all that, there's a lot of interesting detail to it. The crystal on the front on this one is a sapphire crystal. This was the first moon watch to feature a sapphire crystal on the front. That's It was sort of a a, a test run, uh, you know, they, they launched it as a real premium feature on a premium watch in 1992. And uh, it, it really looks great. It doesn't uh, magnify the dial the way the Hesalite crystal does. It's certainly extremely scratch resistant, but the dial itself is really cool too. This was in the age when they used tritium for the loom markers. So of course they don't glow anymore, but they've really softened into um, a beautiful gold color that really matches the watch really well. This combination of black and gold looks fantastic together. And the dial in keeping with the uh, Speedmaster Professional, it's more of a dark gray than a true black. But the Omega logo and the text is prominently in white at 12. The um, markers for the hours are applied 18 karat uh, gold and so are the hands. Uh, they're also 18 karat gold. So you're not gonna see any kind of corrosion or any problems with the aging on it. When you look at the bracelet, this is a, a very nicely constructed bracelet. It is high polished in the center, brushed on the edges. 
an Omega logo on the end of the deployant buckle. And of course it has that sliding extension there. And then the case back, this one is closed and it has the text about being flight qualified by NASA and the serial no or the, the, the limited series number there as well. So when you look at the, the sub dials, they're sort of set off from the rest of the dial with some snailing and some uh, rose gold, some uh, 18 karat gold uh, bezel rings on them. The pushers, of course, and the crown are 18 karat gold as well. The movement on this one, it is a um, 863 movement, which is essentially an 861 with a nice gold finish to it. So that it becomes nice on the eyes if you were to look at the movement. Um, when you think about a gold moon watch, it really looks great on the wrist and it is a, a being made out of a precious metal. It's definitely a precious version of a moon watch. And unlike some of the other watches that you could debate about whether they're really moon watches or not, this one's really in keeping with the version from the sixties. And I think that if you were going to have something for a special occasion or something that is uh, really a, a bargain compared to other vintage inspired chronograph gold watches on a gold bracelet, the price on this one is not that bad. So when you look at our website, uh, you can search Omega Gold Speedmaster and it'll come right up. Uh, even once it's sold, which I don't think will take very long, it'll probably be gone pretty quickly, but the pictures will stay and you'll be able to see all the details about this watch but give us a call, see if we've still got it, and see if we've got any other special Speedmasters that we could send your way.